the Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. Okay, morning. Right. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk a bit about a uh, language that comes from Canada. Um, it has many, many names and many dialects. But uh, the most common phrase, the most common uh, name that you will find online and in references is halkomilum. And I'm going to use uh, the word Musqueam because that's the uh, the word they use, um, the word that's used by the tribe that lives in the Vancouver City or roughly around Vancouver City, and they refer to the language as Musqueam. Uh, we'll look through the dialects and we'll see what makes them so unique. Okay, uh, that's a totem pole, by the way. Right. So, um, what did I do? Oops. Oh, there, oh wait. Oh yeah. There we go. No. Technical difficulties. Uh, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, I'm just a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Alright, so that's. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. This is the one that worked before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Precisely. When it started talking, then it just goes. 25 minutes ago, this button was dead, but I wanted to. Just a minute. Push it up here, push it forward. Because last time we pushed this button. Yeah, we pushed this button. I thought I could probably just push it. Well, I guess I'll just push it manually and walk around a bit. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. So, um, let's take a look at the map of uh, the Salish languages. Okay, you can't, you can't see everything, but uh, basically the language that we're talking about is spoken, this is Vancouver Island, around this area. And this is roughly Vancouver City, right? Um, there are 23 languages in this family, and they're spoken between BC and all the way to Montana. On the, on the east and Oregon in the south, and they're called Salish languages. Um, you might have heard of the more common ones, or the commonly well-known ones, like uh, Belakula, Halkomela, which is the one we're going to talk about today, Lashutseed, which is uh, spoken to the south a little bit, Squamish, Klalam, Shuswap, and Lilluit, which are all seriously endangered. Um, many languages in this family have less than, less than five, 10 speakers maybe uh, a dozen at the most. One or two of them have about a thousand speakers, but that's really the maximum. So, as you can see, um, the language families in this region are very, very diverse. They are surrounded by other languages, other lang from different language families, often with territories that either overlap or, you know, uh, uh, there are enclaves of uh, different language families surrounded by unrelated languages. And this is quite typical of the uh, west coast of uh, the, the uh, North America. Okay, so let's take a look at this area here. That's going to blow it up, and I hope I hope the computer complies with uh, what we're doing. There we go. Okay, let's go with the general characteristics first. Um, Salish languages are agglutinative, or in fact, they can be called polysynthetic, which is agglutinative on steroids. Um, yes, so they make use of lexical suffixes. I talked about this on Friday, if you were present, about how in European languages you have a suffix that shows past tense, a suffix that shows plural, but in these languages they can actually be more concrete. They can stand for face, uh, the head, the throat, the hand, fire, path, child, tree, and arrow, and things like that. And the numbers vary from 100 to 500 depending on the language. So Halkomilum has about uh, 100-ish uh, suffixes, all right? Uh, the languages make use of reduplication, similar to um, Austronesian languages, like in Southeast Asia, uh, Malay and Polynesian. So they indicate, um, for nouns, they can, you can make a noun plural by reduplicating either the whole word or more commonly part of the word. And uh, also to make it uh, into the diminutive form, you can also repeat part of the word to make the, the noun a diminutive of what it uh, originally meant. And for verbs, reduplication shows aspect. Um, they are similar to Russian and Slavic in that you have a perfective and an imperfective aspect. And in this language, this language, what they do is you repeat one of the syllables 
to show that the action has yet to be completed versus a completed action. Okay, there's no tense um, as in English, for example, it's actually complete, incomplete, that's it. And the structure of the language is uh, predicate initial. So basically the verb comes at the beginning of the sentence. If you, anybody speaks Tagalog? No? There we go, that's, that's good. But that, that doesn't follow that. That's a, that's a Spanish loan word anyway. Um, Malagash, Hawaiian, Tahitian, Samoan. If you do speak those languages, you will be familiar with the structure. The verb comes at the, at the beginning of the sentence all the time, okay? Right, and lastly, they have, some languages have them more than others. They have suppletive lexical pairs with a singular and plural reference. This means, I'm talking about verbs, I'm sorry, uh, uh, verbs. So what this means is, some verbs uh, can only be used with a singular, like I, I hit one thing. And if you want to hit more than one, you have to use a different verb. That may be derived from uh, the singular verb, but not necessarily. Okay, so let's go and uh, move closer to... Uh, uh, yes, British Columbia. Here we go. So there are, okay, sorry, there are three main dialect groups in the Halkomelan area. So this is roughly Vancouver City and Island. So you've got then upriver dialect, you can't see it here, a downriver dialect, and an island dialect of Halkomelan. All right, uh, these are not actually dialects, these are dialect groups. So within each group, there are smaller dialects with minimum with um, very very small differences and but they are very obvious to the different tribes so the minute you hear someone speaking with a strange accent oh you're from that tribe and you know I'm from this tribe it's very obvious to them okay and because there's a lot of uh, communication especially uh, for ritual ceremonies people from different tribes would get together for potlatches and, and for rituals and festivals so they are well aware of the differences in their own speech and they use it as a marker of their identity well, they used to before, you know, the language began declining. Uh, the upriver dialect is also known as Stalo or Halkaimelem, all right? And uh, it is, okay, you can't see it, but you, if you listen to the consonants, you can hear the differences between um, the different dialects. The downriver is called Hankaminem, so the N and the K and the N. And the island is called Halkaminem. So what happens is, um, oh, could you, um, thank you. That's lovely, thank you. Oh uh, yes, thank you so much. Yes, I was too tired to do that this morning. All right, so um, thank you so much. Yeah, so if you look at the three different dialects, you will notice something unusual. There is no standard orthography, no standard spelling on, on, for this language. So each tribe has their own way to spell things. Um, all right, I'm using the name Stalo, Musqueam, Kowichan because these are the common uh, names of the uh, the common names of the, the tribes that use them. But there are other tribes as well who have languages that are similar, but are, you know, but consider themselves independent of these tribes. So if you look at um, the upriver dialect, it's an, there are two L's, Hal or Hel, as you pronounce Hel Kamelum, and the L sound is very typical of the uh, upriver dialect on this side. So they use every word that has an N and L will, will become L, like some dialects of Chinese. Uh, yes, and the downriver is the opposite. They tend to have more N sounds, while the island dialect will preserve the distinction between L and N. Do you understand that? Uh, it's, it's similar to what happens in some dialects of, uh, of Mandarin, I think. So if you notice the spelling, a very common sound in, in this language is the schwa, which is uh. And each tribe has a different way of writing it. So the, the people on the upriver side prefer to use an E to write uh. The ones in the downriver now, downriver area of uh, Vancouver, they, they, now they use a sort of modified IPA writing. That's the most common writing system uh, in BU's now, and which we will find in literature. And they use the schwa from the IPA. It's modified, yes, yes. And the island people use, most of them prefer to use a U to write the schwa because there's no, there's no short U sound in the language. So they use uh, that, yeah. Okay, so let's move ahead. Okay, so these are the Hankami no, consonants, so the Musqueam group. Um, uh, you can see it's a huge, yeah. So where do I begin? Uh, so if you look at the top, these are all, they don't have voice stops. Voice stops are not phonemic, so B, D, G, these don't exist. Uh, the top level, you've got the uh, voiceless stops, which is pa, ta, ta, cha, ka, kwa, ka, ko, ko. Yeah, 
So if you speak Arabic, you can do the qut. Okay, but in, in, in this language, it tends to be more um, more um, aspirated than in Arabic. And then you got the ejectives and the famous ejective sounds. So this is produced with uh, the back of the throat. You have a little bit of pressure, and your tongue clicks against uh, yeah where where you uh, form the sound, the tongue or the, the lips. So yeah, uh, that okay. This is interesting. The, the the second column is the dental sound. So it's an Africa. It's a. Uh, uh, so your tongue actually touches the, um, goes between your teeth, the interdental. And then the alveolar sound is ta, uh, with a T with a, like in English, but you know, ta, uh, ejective. There is the, yes, I can hear it very good. And it's ta, uh, which is the sibilant uh, alveolar. It's not really a sibilant, it's the, it's a uh, African. And the lateral sound, so if you speak uh, hosa, this is the, this is a similar sound, but you click it from the sides of your mouth. Uh, you can do it from one side or the other. I, I've seen people use it left moment, or from both sides, which I prefer. Sir, but normally, uh, are not uh, considered ejective. No, no, this is an ejective. This is not click. This is oh. ejective. Uh, I, I'm using an example, but uh, this is uh, actual ejective. So uh, it's reversed from the ejective because a click, uh, you tend to sort of suck the air into your mouth. This one goes out, like you're pushing it out with your mouth. Uh, then you have the, the palatal sounds, which you go ch the vela sound, ka, vela with the rounded lips, qua, and then you go back in the throat, qua, and then qua, very, very big, deep in the throat, qua, and there's a glottal stop which they use, yeah, yeah. okay? Do you have a recording? I do not have at the moment, but I can share with you after the, um, yes, because I don't know how to play it in this, anyway. So, uh, then we go to the, the next column, which are the fricative sounds. So you have the th. Th this depends on the dialect. Some people will have a th, some will pull the tongue back, more like a s, and some have it between th. So it depends on the, the dialect and the area. But generally, it, you will hear it as a th, a sort of a soft uh, internal sound. S is s, and a sh. If you speak Welsh, this is very common. Sh, sh, ch, ch, and then, then you go back, really, really back. So there's a difference between the, 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 the X without the, um, the hachek and the X with. It's completely different. Uh, and it sounds different to them. It, it's really obvious, uh, obviously phonemic. And then we go to the nasal sounds, which is pretty much standard, the nasals and the resonance. And then we go down to the glottal, glottalized nasals, glottalized resonance, where the M, again, you can pronounce it like a m, yes, but it depends on the sound. In in some instances, when there's a stressed syllable before, it becomes a glottal stop and an m. So, like the word for pigeon is ha ma, so it's not ha ma but ha ma. We just uh, oh, ma, I can't remember whether where the stress is, but it you can separate it, so it's not not as uh, strongly uh, glottalized. Okay, and uh, na na ya wa. Okay, so you're gonna, we're gonna give some examples of sounds of words using these sounds later on. Now, vowels are, you can see the vowels are completely uh, misrepresented here. There are only basically, there are five vowels, all right, and pretty standard, the long and short. Short forms are more common. Uh, there are very, very, very few words that have long, long vowels, okay? One of them being the word for you all, tape which is uh, one of the few that you will find uh, most often. So the i, e, and u, u, e, e, and a, uh, and a, uh, and a. Uh. For the a, uh, the schwa, it tends to take on the characteristics of whatever sound is around it. So if you have a labial sound, a w, it tends to become a w. And if you have a y, it sounds like y, depending on what is uh, in front and what is by the back. So it, I'll show you some, give you some examples. Of sounds. Now, anybody would like to practice? All right, here we go. Who wants to practice? These are some sounds. These I picked this because they have the the, the most different sounds uh, from European languages. Not all of them are like this, but this is just just uh, you know, to scare you. Okay, so the word for skull is stomach. I I, I can't hear the the t stronger stomach. Yeah, got it. Yes, <coughs> got it. So um, the the stress is marked here, like this. So usually stress is quite predictive in this, uh, quite predictable 
in this language, except for some uh, exceptions. So, in writing, you can optionally put an accent to mark where the stress is. If the word has a lot of schwa, just stress the first syllable, and you're safe. Yeah, that's the word. So, the next word is, anyone wants to try? Yes. And it means a seed. Okay? And the word for fish hawk is Remember to do. Yeah, yeah. Very good. And I love the word for oyster. So you notice the uh becomes more rounded oh because of the, the presence of the sound. Okay? That's when, uh, yeah. So you can, it kind of sounds like when you're opening an, an oyster, it, it could be from there. Um, a common word is nut, which means one. It's very easy. Very common word is uh, man, woman, okay, which is sway, 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 sway. So the 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 uh, the, sh the second uh, if you the word for woman the schwa becomes more like an i because it's next to a, a y, so it tends to it tends to take on that kind of um, that kind of uh, coloring, depending on the next so uh, the next uh, consonant, and then very my favorite word squake, impossible, squake yeah you can say squake right? it's impossible. Uh, the word for cough which does sound like word like a cough is akum, akum like yeah it sounds like that. And slums, always slump, sorry. Slump. To jump. Uh, yes. What is the second phoneme in jump? Oh, uh, it's, a, it's a, a dental, yeah, it's a dental, uh, it's a glottalized dental effort or ejective. So it's a, like a club, but with more um, glottal club. Very strong. Yeah. I hear you doing very well, yeah. Very good. Impossible is square E. Sorry? Impossible. Square I don't hear the, the At the end, yes, it's very slight. Ah, it's after. Yes, so it, it changes. De before. No, it depends on the position in the word. It's allophonic. It changes depending on the position in the word. Yes. So the glot, the, the the Y, the Ws, the Ls will, you will hear it sometimes after, sometimes before, depending on. Yeah. So it's. It's you not have always the answer. It's incredible. Uh, no, no, don't worry. About <laughs> You'll have more questions for me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna dread the next few pages. Okay, so let's talk about um, nouns, things, objects. Very, very simple. Here we go. Okay, now if you speak Hawaiian and Tagalog and Malagash, you will see some similarities. Any word can function as a predicate <coughs> head. So basically. You can use any word and say, uh, like the word for elephant, and you put the word elephant, and it means it is an elephant. You can put something, anything at the beginning of a sentence, it becomes a verb or it becomes like a, a copula in Japanese, something, something, this. In this case, you put it at the front. I, I will show you with examples later on. And to simplify things, this is very simple. Let's look at the verbs. So remember when I said it resembles Russian and Slavic? This is where it happens. So. Like in Indonesian, you repeat certain parts of the, you know, the word. So this is the word for so, pet. Yeah. And if you go, he is sewing, it's pet, pet. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, you, you repeat part of the word. So what you do is, you sort of repeat the first syllable. And whatever comes after, you make it into a schwa. That's basically, that's the easiest and the most... Um, common paradigm. There are other ways to do it and it's not very regular. You have to sometimes memorize which verbs take what kind of reduplication. So I'm giving you a very, very simple look. So suck, tear, suck, suck, suck. Yeah. So you, you hear the re repetition and that shows that the object, the, the, um, the action is not complete or hasn't been finished yet. So this is actually an uh, ejective So it's quash. Which means to flow and flowing. You know, it's flowing. It sounds cute. Okay, so these are the verbs. All right. So if you look at the nouns again, repetition, uh, reduplication is very, very common as well. So nouns can be reduplicated partially to show plural and diminutive. So the word for hand is tselach, tselach. And if you reduplicate, what you do is you take part of the first syllable and put it at the front 
and you make the vowel into a shwa, then you get tzeltzelach, which means hands. And it's again, it's not uh, not a hundred percent predictable. You have to actually memorize the plural patterns for certain things. And then, if you want to make something small, you take the first consonant, put it after the first vowel, and you get a small thing, tzitzlach, which is a small hand. And if you want to make it plural, you use this, and you put an L between the first and the second, uh, the first uh, consonant, and uh, the first syllable, uh, the first vowel. But you add a schwa to make it easier to pronounce, as if it's what it, you know. It's already that easy. Tzeletzlach. Uh, Tzeletzlach is a small, a small hands. Okay, so you see the pattern. Uh, you know, so this is a very common pattern. So I, 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 there are more of them, and sometimes with an L and N, sometimes it becomes H. But I won't, you know, go into that and, and give you more of a headache than you already have now. So, okay, so let's move on slowly. Right. So if we talk about nouns. In Indo-European languages, you have masculine, feminine, and all that, so they have that as well. Okay, so, you can recognize a noun, usually, by the presence of an article at the front. And this article is not, is not based on definiteness. Usually, it's based on proximity and visibility. So, when you have a word that uh, for... Oh, I forgot to explain. So, three columns. So, feminine and plural here, non-feminine and plural, refers to anything that is not a woman. So it's, yeah, so men, fire, you know, uh, apples, oranges, everything are, are lumped together in the same group. I'm serious. So, so if you have, for example, a man or an object or a table that is in front of you, you must put ta. Or a group of things, like a group of people is ta. And if there's only one woman in front of you, you must put th in front of a thing. But this refers to someone that you can see and it's uh, a present in your environment. If you can't see the person in the other room but is nearby, you have, you have to say kth if it's, a, if it's not a woman. If it is a woman, it's shla. shla. I will give you some examples. And these are used, this is for fe female and non-female, kwa and kus and kse are used usually for things that are very, very distant. If you're telling a story, a legend, once upon a time there was a blah, 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 you would use these normally. If you're talking about a country far, far away, you would use these, all right? And the oblique simply uh, would mean, would be used where European languages use a preposition, like I'm going to somewhere, then the to would be tla, so that it gets replaced by tla, okay? So it's simple, it's elegant, but it's, it's different. It's not, uh, not so complicated. I'll show you some examples of nouns with, uh, with this. Okay, so let's look at, uh, if you have a daughter or a son, so using this logic, most nouns have, have no natural gender. They can be male or female, so the word for child can be son or daughter, depending on what comes in front. So let's look at this. So the word for child is ma -na. but my child is na ma -na. But, but then again, it depends on whether the person is male or female or, you know, whether present or not. So if you have a daughter in this room right now, and, oh, that's my daughter, you would say, th na ma na na Yes, it's a tongue twister, I know. Yes. Okay, if she's here. But if, she, if she's in the next room or she's downstairs, close to you, but you can't see her, sha na ma na Yes, sha na ma na And if you have a son, so you keep the same word. The word for child is the same. Son, daughter, there's no difference. You change the gender. So it's ta nama na, my son who is around. And if he's not around, kutha nama na. In the next room, okay? And likewise, the word for hen, because hen is not a woman, so use the same as the male, ta, tselach. And plural is always ta, ta, tel, tselach. Okay? And in fact, in the whole language, there are only seven words that are gender specific. That you know you have to be male or female, otherwise you could... So it's basically quite, um, quite egalitarian, actually. The words for male, sweika, which is sweika, which is man, obviously. Sleini, which is a woman. Sweutlas, uh, which is a young man. Khatmi, which is a young woman. Men, which means father. Men, not men. And tin, which is mother. It's one of the languages where M uh, is not used in the word for mother, okay? Yes, and it's used for father instead. And then, which means sister-in-law. 
Okay, so again, why sister-in-law and no brother-in-law? You can talk about culture and you know, uh, and uh, traditional customs, but yes, there is there is prominence given to the sister-in-law, but there's no word for brother-in-law. <laughs> I, I can't remember what it is, but it's another it's another phrase that is um, derived from a, a verb, I think. It is a patriarchal or matriarchal society, or what? it's it they used it's um, well the, the the problem is it's matrilineal, so your 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 family is your mother's family. That's why. But the, 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 what is men, what men do, what women do is defined by society. So men will hunt, women will normally stay home and take care of the family. But the woman is usually the woman is usually the um, the head of the household. So in the house, everything belongs to her, and usually she uh, she determines uh, who does what. You know, but the, but men do most of the hunting and the fighting. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. I'm kidding. Okay, so let's talk about how we say I, you, he, she, you know, okay? Let's talk about pronouns. Alright, so favorite words. Now, these are independent pronouns. They are used in the same way that uh, you would use in English me, it's, or I, in French moi. So they are used when, like, who are you, uh, who's that? Oh, it's me, I'm here, me, me. So in this case, you would use ENTH or ENTH. For we is schnimmers. Schnimmers. I hear it. Very good. Very good. You is easy. Noah. And Schwalop. Schwalop is you all. Okay. There's no uh, inclusive, exclusive uh, distinction in this language. He, she, or it is tla. Tla. And they is tlalam. So uh, there's an interesting difference here because in in the um, in the dialects in, on uh, the mainland Vancouver, you know the the downriver dialects and the upriver dialects, they prefer to use tla to mean he, she, or it. But on Vancouver Island, they prefer to use nich. So you have a dialect, you have two dialects where the pronouns are actually different. Sorry. Could they use those uh, <coughs> articles that you talked about for for synonyms? Put it with the. the he, she, it to actually say he, she? No, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. But they, they do appear with demonstrated, demonstrated pronouns of this, that, and, and, and those. You can appear. Okay, so that's you know, very easy. So these are useful when you are, um, you can say in uh, a copular form, like it's me or that's him, you would use these forms. Or he was the one who did something. Now, if you want to conjugate a verb, you have to use another set, completely different. They, they look nothing alike, trust me. So, there are only four of them. Uh, so you put these normally after the verb, because the verb comes first. So for I, I do something, is something ten, ten. And you is chu. I think the island dialects prefer ch. So it's just, it's just ch in, in some dialects, but in, in Vancouver City, it's more like chu. Chu, yeah. So as you can guess, it's not something you can call a person. You can't. Hey, you. You can't say that. So obviously, this is used only in a in a sentence, like you are going to school or something. So that's we tst, or tst. and you all is tip, tip, long vowel, long yeah. Okay. So let's look at a simple sentence. Um, okay. So very very simple sentence. The word for big is actually big, not by. I'm sorry. I missed out. It's thi, thi, which means big or thi in some dialects, and you can use that as, as a sentence. Thi. That's it. He or she is or it is big. That's it. Um, if you want to, like, remember when I said some adjectives and nouns and verbs and verbs have plural forms. So the plural form of big is the thi, the thi, which means big but for plural objects. So by itself, it can actually stand for a sentence. They are big, those things are big. And if we want to say, I am big, thi tsen. Thi tsen, you know, so big I. Big you, thi chu. Thi chu, okay? And you can use it uh, even with nouns. So bear, a bear is a speth. So he or she, it's a bear, speth. That's it, nothing, nothing else. It's a bit like Tagalog. I think there's there's something interesting that we have to explore. Um, the word for man, sway and woman is, and men is sway 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 which is a different, slightly different. It's partially reduplicated, so part of it goes, you know, you can you can see the reduplication, and it's simple. So I am a man, sway 
I am a woman slain it. That's it. I am John Johnton. You know, it's pretty simple. All right. Any questions? So these are for copular sentences. Like it is this, this is this. If you want to go for slightly more complex uh, sentences, hold on. Okay, I'm going to go very slowly. Okay, most complex sentences take have to start with an auxiliary verb. Usually it's i or ni. All right, i. There is a glottal stop in front, so you have to separate i or ni. All right. The difference is i is used for things that are happening now and within view, and it also so it's not it's not like present and past. It's here and now, there and then. So if you see an action, so I help the man. Simple thing. E, ten, te would just wait. So so you see the the pattern. Auxiliary verb and then pronoun, pronominal um, particle, verb to help, man. To is a man, okay? Who is who is within the proximity, within the area? If you want to say the past tense, you're using e. Just change the auxiliary. But there's another thing. E can also mean I'm helping the man right now, in front of me. Ni can also mean I'm helping the man, but it doesn't make sense. Far away, but it doesn't make sense. If if you send an email to somebody to to, to give him extra instructions, you could probably say ni. So it's a present tense, but not present in your um, field of experience. So it's something you're experiencing now versus uh, right now, right in front of you, versus far away elsewhere. So it's a lot of language. This language runs like this: uh, things that are visible, that are here and now, and things that are invisible, not here and not now. So they they are parallels, and similar with each they were to sway the sway cut. You help the man. Oh, sorry, it's you. Sorry, this is you. You, my mistake. Okay, and me they were to sway which means you help the man, or or you are helping the man. Far away from me, I can't see you. Therefore, you are distant. You are past. You are not with me. That's what it means. So it's here with me, far away from me. That's what they actually mean. And they usually these are found with most uh, transitive and intransitive verbs. Actions they have to because when you do an action, you have to you know think whether it's action that's around me or an action that's away from me. Okay, All right. Um, yes. Oh, that, yes. The, I haven't put the the way to make the future is. Because the future is hypothetical, it's neither here nor now, so you don't use these. So the future you would use the verb tsewet. This because this is the verb, the verb always comes first. So tsewet, the ten comes here, and then there's a particle te, which means future. So it's tsewet ten te tsewet ka. You put the you put the 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 te after the verb, because you know, so these are only for things that are here now and not here and not now. But not hypothetical, not you know predicted. That's what it means. Okay, so um, quickly. Okay, so uh, question words. If you can, if you can ask. So uh, this is very, very, very briefly. Uh, the word for who is wet or to wet, and there's a plural form welt, welt, which means who. But who are they? Who are those? Who are you know? And then we've got stem, which is what. But there's a plural form, stelem, what, what are those, what, what are, you know, what. Tomtem is when, stekul, which means how, how much, and sometimes who, you know, but depending on the context. Okay, so, um, let's see, we've got, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go slightly faster. Okay, so, thank you. So, um, going back to the lexical suffixes, so when a verb, you know, when you say, I was talking on this on Friday. Um, so you got the word which means to warm or warm up. You have the word for stomach, net, and the word this shows a transitive. So when you see any verb that has a, ends with a T, it's a transitive verb. It's very regular. So it means an action that you do to someone or something else. So it means to put a pot over the fire. But if you can see from the sentence, there's no pot and there's no fire. So what it means is it's an idiomatic expression, very very common. And you can see the suffix. This is the word for stomach in lexical suffix form. The word for the actual word is, I can't remember, but it's, it's longer and it doesn't look like this at all. So you add the suffix 
to indicate an action done towards a stomach, or something that resembles a stomach, something that's rounded, you know, a little bit curved. So that's why a curved object at warming and an action. A curved object getting warmed caused by someone else. And that's to put a pot over a fire. Uh, the word for hip bone, stump nuts. So stump is stump is bone and stomach, belly, abdominal area. So hip bones. Okay. Let's see. Let's see more. All right. So this one is okay. So here's a here's a very interesting way. He or she takes him by the hand. So you got the e here. Remember, there's, there's no third person uh, uh, pronominal particle. So if, so if there's nothing, there's no ten chu, it means he or she. That's it. Anything that doesn't, doesn't have any, um, any personal, prefix, uh, personal particles is basically third person. That's it. So present tense or now, happening now, grabbing or taking, hand, atus. And this is a transitive. It means you're doing to somebody else. And it means to take somebody's hand. If you want to say, I take him or her by the hand, then what we do? Verb, particle, tsen, eaten, kunatist. You okay? And you is chu, so each kunatist. That's what it means. It's very simple. All right. I won't use, uh, this is interesting. When it, the action refers to he, she, it, when it's. Um, an action done, uh, actually I made a mistake here. He or she, when it occurs with the trust, usually they, it becomes, the verb becomes ergative. Do you know what ergative means? Have you learned Basque? Yeah. So for third person on third person, this whole thing becomes <coughs> ergative and it takes on another, another particle comes at the back, but I won't explain that. Roughly, just to give you an idea of how it works, but it would be equalitist, uh, equalitist, which means that he or she does something to something else. When there's a third person acting on so, uh, another person, then it becomes ergative, uh, interestingly. But we'll just keep it simple for now. Okay, so I have about six, seven minutes for questions. So this is how we say thank you. Uh, hi chuka. Or in, on the island is hi chuka, depending on, depending on uh, where, you, where you're from, where you, which part of the living are. Okay? All right, hi chuka, or hi chuka. Okay. Any questions? And I've got the, oh yeah, any questions? Uh, yes, can somebody? Uh... Um, I was just wondering if you knew anything about community efforts in terms of preservation, promotion, teaching language. Okay, good question. Um, the problem is that the, uh, the, the different tribes, different areas have different, uh, the different tribes and the different areas have different um, different programs going on. The one that I know is that um, Vancouver City is promoting Musqueam, this dialect, uh, is promoting this dialect. Uh, I'm not sure about the other communities. Um, I think the island and the, the uh, downriver dialects are more active compared with the, the upriver ones. Yeah, But it's the upriver ones that are more unique because the, the eastern dialects have developed tone. So not only that, you have tone as well. Which I don't know, uh, I really don't know how to explain, but yeah, total genesis. Yes, thanks, yeah. Um, great talk, thanks a lot. Um, what about in the field? Have you had any chance yet to get among these people? And if not, what are you planning to do to do that? Good question. I met one of uh, a native speaker sometime like 15 years ago, and I thought this, you know, when I heard them talking, I said, This is the most incredible language I've ever heard, so hence. That's why. Um, I would like to go back to Vancouver. I haven't been back in 15 years. Uh, so maybe, yes, I would be interested to, yeah, to meet some people. Or at least from this group of languages, because I find them so fascinating. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. Broader question. Yeah. Where and how did you learn all this? Oh, um, I have no idea. I've always liked... I've always liked <laughs> I've always liked traditional uh, native languages. When I was young, I used to teach, well, younger, I used to teach um, English and Malay to tribal people in uh, West Central Malaysia. So I, I, I guess that, that, that helped. I, I just volunteered. And that sort of, it, it grew to indigenous languages in general. 
That's it, yeah. Sorry. Just for the future, could, do you also study the uh, <clears throat> indigenous languages of Malaysia? I would love to, I would love to. Um, just to go a we little far, yeah, we, don't, we don't have all, next in October, I would love you to. can't do this one on I would love to, I would love yeah, to, I think so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the thing is, most people don't know is that in central Malaysia, they are completely unrelated to the surrounding Malay languages. In fact, they're closer to Cambodian and Vietnamese. So that tells you a bit about the history of the, the region. Well, I yeah. like in, uh, in Borneo. Oh, oh, Borneo too, yeah. Oh, Borneo, those are Austronesian, yeah. I probably could, yes. My sister-in-law is from Borneo, let me go and uh, do some field work there. Yeah. <laughs> and a um, couple, yeah, yeah, a few more questions, that's fine. About four minutes. It's more like observation or rhetorical question. Why would anyone bother to invent like artificial language like Klingon or whatever else? If that fascinating language are around, you can just speak them and use exactly. them. Exactly. People don't know about them, that's why. That's all, yeah. No need to invent uh, Dothraki and uh, whatever, yeah. yeah. Don't say that once, but Yeah. Uh, I have a few questions on the one of the slides. Uh, you said 12 speakers. Is that 12 speakers per dialect or total amongst the three dialects? Total among the three dialects. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. And it's then, sad. Um, uh, yeah, that's sad. Um, then you said they means klalam. Sorry? You said the word oh, for the no, pronouns. Sorry, it, it's for, uh, yeah. Yeah. Klalam. Klalam. Okay, uh, and this is also the name of another tribe. Yes, yes, is that, exactly. It's like those people over there? Could be, it, it's possible, yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, very good. Right. Um, and uh, if you have a clip, we can hook up the sound system if you want to. I don't have a clip at the handy. moment. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to find one, yeah. Okay. So sorry. A okay. uh, couple more minutes, yeah. Um, yeah. But if you, there are twelve speakers for three dialects, yeah. I mean, it's it's that it's a, there is no chance to. Uh, these are three. These are sorry. These are twelve uh, fluent speakers. They are also semi-fluent speakers. People whose parents and grandparents uh, speak it, and they remember some of it. So yeah, uh, I I guess there are efforts underway, but I'm not I'm not positive. You know, feeling that in in twenty years, you know. Uh, uh, 2,000 people are going to speak it, but hopefully we'll see what happens, yeah. Right. Yeah, there needs to be more effort put into this, uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, more questions? No? Okay, last one, yeah. Thank you. Excuse me. Is there any literatural books about that? Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, the problem is I don't have it on my slide. Uh, if you want, you can come and see me after this in the you know in the other room, and I can I can share them with you. Yeah, definitely. There there are a couple of websites that have uh, have good resources resources on uh, this and other dialects from from the same family as well. So I can show you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.